Moss Side in Manchester houses a transient community of people, many of whom are refugees from Africa, Eastern Europe and the Caribbean. This diverse ethnic mix is reflected in the 408 pupils who attend Claremont Primary School. 95% of pupils are of ethnic minority heritage and over half have English as an additional language. How does the school facilitate inclusion with a very high pupil turnover? We're going to look at five strategies to manage the problems that inevitably come with having such a diverse school role. You have obviously the language problem but also we've got children that are coming in as refugees that have gone through lots of trauma and situations you know in their home countries that have, has an effect on their stability. We have a lot of strategies in place for those children which include we have a diversity and inclusion team which includes two bilingual teachers as we have some, I think it's 31 languages spoken in school. The diversity and inclusion team work within school um, and they work on lots of, in lots of different areas, learning needs, behaviour needs, black achievement and English as a second language and I basically coordinate there's a team of four of us within the school. All the staff have had English as an additional language training. Also, we have the parental coordinator, so that we have a lot of links with the community and bring the community into school so that we can work together. We have lots of arts policies and drama policies and music policies together with African drumming, steel band, which would incorporate lots of enrichment in the curriculum for children. One of the problems that I found initially was children who come to the school as what we call late entries, not children maybe that come in at Key Stage 1, but then will come in as late as Year 6 or even Christmas at Year 6 and have to access the curriculum. And I found that there was a problem with those children in that they lack confidence in responding in speaking and listening activities. They, I think, were more aware of their peers and being ridiculed. So I just hit upon the idea of using a puppet. 10 plus what number, Heather? 10 plus 10. Is that right, Monty? 10 plus 10. And thought we could address the fact that he has a new pupil. How would he be feeling? And this may affect how other children would then view new pupils coming in and may, may help to ease a lot of problems. Every time I've brought Monty out, the reaction, the response by the children has been really, really positive and never really fails to amaze me. What number has he got in his head? Do you want to choose somebody, Monty? I think the children relate so well to Monty because they immediately empathise with him. He seems one of them. He's in a school uniform. He, they don't see him as a teacher. They see him as one of them. Very often, they also see him as maybe coming from their culture. It, Monty isn't um, a common name. It's not a popular name. So they don't actually know where the name Monty comes from until they realise it's from the word Claremont. It feels like he's really human and you can't see Mrs. Hand. It just looks like she's tucked it behind her like, like that. They want to be good because when they don't be good, Monty goes away. Monty goes away, don't you? Monty's one of our classmates because he's good and he helps you and he's a good puppy and a good man. He's in a position whereby they're not embarrassed at talking to a puppet. Who knows what its partner is to make 20? <laughs> Very often they're helping him to do something. It's him that's getting something wrong initially. What can we do? What is Monty saying wrong? How can we help him? Is he saying the wrong sound? What sound does he need to use in that word? So, from the very first, they're helping him before he starts to help them. I want you to help Monty, because Monty's going to say something to me. I wonder if you could write a sentence. Monty says, he can hear he can hear winging in 
in the classroom. What does it mean he can hear? He can hear winging in the classroom. Sarah. He means singing. What letter did he get wrong? What letter did he get wrong, Heather? He got the S wrong. What did he say instead of the S? The W. One of the things that I was surprised at when using the puppet was the number of things that you can address. You may be, the focus may have been phonics or medial sounds or blends, but then you can work at every child's level. If they're using whiteboards and they're writing, you can then comment on the punctuation or on spelling strategies, and you can just pick up on so many things using the puppet, which no doubt you could use without a puppet, but their response is that every child is motivated to work for the puppet to comment on their work. Show Monty your sentences. Let's have a look. Oh, Monty says he likes Shamani's sentence because she's talking about me talking and she's remembered to use a capital letter and a full stop. And he says he likes Heather's handwriting because she's remembered spaces between her words. I haven't had any formal training with a puppet. I haven't observed anybody using a puppet either. I suppose you just remember it from you when you were a child and you observed puppets on television, ventriloquists using puppets, and ad lib really, I suppose self-taught, but I don't think there's anything for teachers to worry about not having had any training. I think it's something that you just pick up ideas and things to do as you go along. In total, 32 languages are spoken at Claremont Primary School, with some children having little or no English, and this can generate many problems with the existing pupils, new pupils and also parents. Claremont has two programmes in place that not only tackle the issues arising from EAL, but also utilise the fact that many students speak another language. Right, Samaya, so this is Kosa and Omar who are joining our school. Now, they only speak Somali, so I wonder if you could help me show them round and explain to them all about our school. Um, school can work standing to say it. The school translators arose from when we got new children into the school, we were asking other children within the school, within their class, to help translate and explain things to them. So the idea kind of grew from there. We were already doing it, but not as in an official way as we are now. With actually designated translators within the school and their pictures up on the wall. They're like a chaperone in a way for the day, helping them, explaining to them where things are. We'll carry on as long as the child feels that they need that support. Samaya, could you explain to Kosa and Omar, please, what we do in here? There's benefits to the children as the translators because it builds their confidence and their self-esteem. There's benefits for the children that are new to the school because it helps them to become included within school life. Have your dinners. Teachers know who they are, so they're always on call if they need some help within the class with some translation. And the children have also helped to translate for parents um, within the school. You know, things when, when parents' evening is, um, you know, forms they need to fill in, so they've, they've given help there as well. I think the most evident barrier for children with English as an additional language in the classroom is obviously confidence in speaking out um, in their second language and so having that extra time to practice it gives them that extra little bit of confidence to speak out in class and feel included and feel part of the class. So what we're going to do, we're going to do talking partners and you're going to try and find out some information about your partner. If there's two children that speak the same language in the same class then they sit next to each other and when they're given a task to do or when the teachers are asking questions, they're given sometimes five minutes to think with their partner, maybe write down some ideas, make sure they really understand it and maybe help each other think of a way to say it back to the teacher and to the whole class, making sure it makes sense and they've got all the words in the right order and they've got all the vocabulary in. There's definitely really striking results at the moment in class. The pair at the front, Unde and um, Isotu, Isotu's only been in the school three days and she hasn't got a lot of English at all, but obviously you could see that she was actually really confident to speak out at the end of the lesson because she'd had that time to practice with Unde. Isotu, can you tell me something about Unde? Yeah? yeah? He has a uh, uh, brother. 
She's got a brother. Well done. Anything else? I find talking partners really ad advantageous, especially when we're um, doing formative assessments. So where there's question and answers at the beginning of the lesson, making sure that everyone's understood. A large proportion of Claremont's pupils are Somalian, and the school has devised a unique way of including all members of the Mossside Somali community. Gaditan, Somalian for Achievement, is a session for both parents and pupils, where help is given with literacy and numeracy, and parents tell children about life in Somalia. The idea came from a project run similarly in Norfolk, and we thought maybe it, the, that program can be adopted to the needs of the Somali community here to help the children who are very new to the country. Yeah. This morning we were doing the artifacts from Somalia, uh, which actually comes from the parents themselves, and they, they, we try to empower the children's uh, background and their uh, culture. And also in the session, some parents uh, tell the folk tales from Somalia, so they can pass it on to the children, and uh, or sometimes they do play uh, Somali folk dance, and the children try to practice it. What material is it made of? It's made of wood, as you see. It helps them parents to give a confidence that they can help their children in the school and to come as a part of the school culture and that they could make use of the school environment and help their children. The Gaitan session benefits a lot to the Somali children by empowering their background and by giving additional support in the classroom, improving their ability to succeed in later life. Give me back my wristband. No, because it's not yours. Yeah, it is. You sure about that? Where did you find it? In the grass. That's where I dropped mine. Yes, yeah, sure, you yeah, did. Yeah, I did. The peer mediation scheme that we've got in Claremont was implemented last September, uh, the idea of which was to reduce the small amount of altercations and arguments that we have between the children and also to give the children part of an empowerment process in terms of dealing with the behavioural issue in their school because we felt that the best people to understand the arguments and problems that exist to the children themselves. What are peer mediators? People who solve problems out. Oh. So what are you fighting over? This that wristband. wristband. That wristband is mine. It's mine, what are you talking about? OK, OK, OK. We're going to go over some rules. We're not going to gossip. We're not going to act bossy. The children are obviously used to some of the issues that they deal with on the playground, have experienced trouble themselves, and therefore are able to sometimes allow each other to arrive at sensible solutions and it gives them a, a responsibility and a feeling of inclusion within the process of problem solving. Do you think you should like make a solution? solution? Okay. Friends forever? Friends, Friends forever. forever. Through imagination and innovation, Claremont Primary School continues to move forwards, being adaptable to change and flexible towards the ever-evolving face of the Moss Side community. Mm -hmm.